Hallelujah, friends. Blessings. Welcome back to HaKadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus Christ is truly King of kings and Lord of lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is June the 12th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, as we continue our study on the book of 1st Enoch, if you have the book of Enoch in front of you, turn to chapter 47. If not, I will provide a link in the description box for you. You should also have your Bibles handy because we're going to be flipping through many passages of Scripture today. Because these next two chapters are going to focus on what's really going on in the end of days. So let's begin. Chapter 47. And in those days shall have ascended the prayer of the righteous, and the blood of the righteous from the earth before the Lord of the spirits. In those days the holy ones who dwell above in the heavens shall unite with one voice, and supplicate, and pray, and praise, and give thanks, and bless the name of the Lord of spirits. The holy ones will pray on behalf of the blood of the righteous which has been shed. Now if you have your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 6. And let's look at verse 9 to 11. Keeping in mind that the holy ones are going to pray on behalf of the blood of the righteous which has been shed. Now it says in verse 9, When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, of course, this is speaking again of the last days. And so this is the time of the tribulation period under the rule of the world leader, better known as the Antichrist. And these will be the saints that will be killed for taking the name of Jesus and rejecting the rule of the Antichrist. Enoch goes on by saying, and that the prayer of the righteous may not be in vain before the Lord of Spirits, because they are continually crying out, how long will you allow this to go on? They'll do this so that judgment may be done unto them. In other words, that they may receive justice and that they may not have to suffer forever. Verse three, in those days, I saw the head of days when he seated himself upon the throne of his glory and the books of the living were opened before him. I turn to Revelation chapter 20 and look at verse 11 through 13. I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in those books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works out of these books. And so again, in Enoch, the books of the living were opened before him. And all his host, which is in heaven above, and his counselors stood before him. And the hearts of the holy were filled with joy, because the number of the righteous had been offered. The number of the righteous, what does that mean? Luke chapter 18, and look at verse 7. It says, Shall not God avenge his own elect or chosen, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? You see, Enoch is telling us here that the righteous are numbered. Now, this isn't the place for a study on pre-election or predestination, but friends, let's just look real quick at Romans chapter 9 and look at verse 16. It is not of him that wills. It is not of him that runs. But it's God who shows mercy. So it's not about what man does or the choices he makes. It's about God who shows mercy to him. And look at verse 19. So you will say unto me then, why does he find fault? For who has resisted his will? If he's destined some to damnation and some to salvation, then why does he find fault? Because no man has a choice in the matter. And look what we are told in verse 20 and 21. Who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why have you made me this way? Does not the potter have power over the clay of one lump to make one vessel unto honor and to another dishonor? Friends, whether we like it or not, whether we approve of it or not, 
The Bible is very clear that the righteous is numbered, and so is Enoch here, because the number of the righteous has been offered, and the prayer of the righteous has been heard, and the blood of the righteous has been required before the Lord of Spirits. Chapter 48. And in that place I saw the fountain of righteousness, which was inexhaustible, which means it is eternally full, it is eternally flowing. And around it were many fountains of wisdom, and all the thirsty drank of them, and they were filled with wisdom, and their dwellings were with the righteous and holy and elect. Look at Revelation chapter 22 and verse 1. Now he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now look at verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hears say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely, because it's inexhaustible. And Enoch tells us here, All that drink of this water are filled with wisdom, and their dwellings were with the righteous and holy and elect. And at that hour, the Son of Man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits, and is named before the head of days, yea, before the sun, and the signs were created, before the stars of the heaven were made. His name was named before the Lord of Spirits. Now, this is speaking of Jesus. He shall be a staff to the righteous, whereon to stay themselves and not fall. And he shall be the light of the Gentiles and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him and will praise and bless and celebrate with song the Lord of Spirits. I love that word celebrate there. And for this reason hath he been chosen and hidden before him, before the creation of the world and forevermore. Now for this, let's look at two passages. First of all, look at Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now look at John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Well, who is the word? Look at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus, friends, Jesus of Nazareth. And so we see here from Enoch that he pre-existed before all others. He wasn't created. He is God in the flesh. Back to chapter 48, verse 7 of First Enoch. And the wisdom of the Lord of spirits hath revealed him to the holy and righteous. For he hath preserved the lot of the righteous, because they have hated and despised this world of righteousness. And they have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of spirits. Do you remember James chapter 4, verse 4? which tells us he who is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So he who is a friend of God is an enemy of the world. And because the world is our enemy, we have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness. And we have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits. For in his name, they are saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, There's no other name under heaven by which a man may be saved. It's only through the name of Jesus, friends. And so back to First Enoch. According to his good pleasure has it been in regard to their life. In these days, downcast in countenance shall the kings of the earth have become, and the strong who possess the land because of the works of their hands. For on the day of their anguish and affliction, they shall not be able to save themselves. And I will give them over into the hands of mine elect." So the sinful man who lives upon the world will be placed at the hands of the elect. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 tells us, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And could that be what Enoch is telling us here? The Most High will give the sinner upon the earth into the hands of his elect. As straw in the fire, so shall they burn before the face of the holy. As lead in the water shall they sink before the face of the righteous. And no trace of them shall any more be found. And on the day of their affliction, there shall be rest on the earth. And before them, they shall fall and not rise again. If things come to an end as quickly as most of us think that they will, 
it, it will only be around 7,000 years since men have been able to rest upon the earth. And yet that is the promise that we have been given. There will be no one to take them with his hands and raise them, speaking of the unrighteous, for they have denied the Lord of the spirits and his anointed. Why? Because we're proclaiming the gospel. We're proclaiming the truth. We're telling others the message. We're trying to win souls, and yet they have rejected the message. And he says, not only have they denied the Lord of the spirits, but they have denied his anointed. And then he ends with, blessed be the name of the Lord of spirits. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. We'll pick up at chapter 49 next time we're together. And I trust that you're being blessed by how much the book of Enoch is in the Bible and how much of the Bible is in the book of Enoch. And they fit so knitly together. And not only am I being blessed by this revelation as we study the book of 1st Enoch, I got to admit to you, I'm being surprised because this has been kept from us for so long. And my only question is why? Because it seems to be answering so many questions that we've had for so long. Well, before we leave these chapters, if you would like to do a little bit more study on your own, I would invite you to read Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and Revelation chapter 6, because they all deal very specifically with one another. They complement one another, and the context of each of those passages is dealing with the last days. And if you would like, take these last two chapters and align them with what you see in those four passages that I just gave you. Well, friends, I wish nothing for you but blessing today that you walk with the Lord Jesus humbly with meekness, peace, and joy. And everything about your life today will bring him glory, honor, and praise. I love you, friends. Now, until next time, and as Yahweh wills, I'll see you on the next video.